champions. Repairing a electro harmonics electric mistress. Now, complication of these things, they have an obsolete chip. That is a Reticon SAD 1024A. Now, these are as close to unobtainium as you can possibly get these days. They are a bucket brigade analog delay chip. Um, they are all failing. This one is still in its original packaging. Um, the customer brought this one in for modification to 18 volts to have a DC power supply instead of the built-in mains transformer and the 120 volt input. Uh, he mentioned nothing of the thing not working so I converted it to DC input. No problem, everything functioned but one side of the existing chip was dead, wasn't giving any output. Uh, so they, they give two outputs, um, the clock is out of phase but the signal's in phase so it mixes them together and the clock signal cancels out and you've got a like a trim pot to, to balance between the two to get the maximum rejection of the clock signal. Uh, only one side was coming out so it was flanging uh, but very very weakly and it was a bit um, noisy as well as a result so that chip I uh, should have had equal output on both sides and it didn't. One side was zero, the other side was oh, as it should be. Uh, so I had break it to him that I'm charging you anyway because you didn't tell me that the thing didn't work and I did exactly as you asked. Uh, but he was understanding and just took the pedal back, bided his time and went on the lookout for one of these. There were some in Spain, looked sketchy. Um, there's lots of these because they fetch big money and you can easily if you're the seller uh, and you're a little bit dodgy you can easily say oh well you must have broken the chip putting it in or you might have had a static discharge um, so not our problem uh, we're keeping the 300 bucks for that one chip and you can go get fucked basically and you've got to start a claim and all of that crap uh, this one came from one of my friends lives uh, in the same state as me. Um, he has a bunch of old crazy new old stock stuff. This is one of them. These used to be Archer uh, brand that was sold at our equivalent of Radio Shack, which is uh, Tandy, no longer in business. So that would have said Archer up the top. It would have had a, um, a little you know hole to hang it on the shelf. I remember seeing these individual chips when I was a little kid and most kids who go to Toys R Us or the you know video games or whatever. I was hanging out at Dick Smith, Tandy and J Car because I'm a friggin' nerd. And I was looking at all this stuff, I couldn't afford it, and I'm wondering what it did and if I could utilize it or maybe I should try and build one into a project or build a kit, you know, surrounding that thing. If I had any brains, which I'd never claimed to, I would have bought every friggin' one of these there, but how do you know it's gonna be valued? You know, so all these vintage old pedals ran on these SAD uh, 1024s. That's one of the brands. There's also Panasonic make uh, the MN series. They're a little bit more attainable. Some of them aren't. Some of them are. Um, there's also companies that have revived the analog um, bucket brigade concept and gotten their own chips fabricated. MXR uh, in their carbon copy delay, for example. In my opinion. I'm not a big fan of analog delays. They're noisy. They've got very limited bandwidth. That's kind of their thing. But the, just the noise and the lack of dynamics really gets on my nerves. I would prefer to have a cheap chip like the um, PT2399 and just filter the, the uh, feedback loop. So then you get the same sort of uh, decaying treble in a, on each uh, repeat. But you've got a modern chip that's worth like a dollar, if that. You probably buy them for fifty cents if you bought a hundred of them. They're easily attainable. They are digital, um, but the input and output circuitry is analog. So as far as the pedal builder is concerned, they're an analog chip. Uh, all the conversion happens within the, the the package. So you can make a very simple, very effective delay pedal, and lots of companies have done that. I prefer the companies that don't try and hide the fact that it's a PT twenty three ninety nine by 
either gooping it and calling it an analog delay when it's not, um, or just just calling it an analog delay like uh, Joyo, Joyo, however you say it. Their analog analog delay pedal has a PT2399 in it, which is a digital digital chip. Uh, so that's a bit misleading, but it sounded okay, and it was like thirty bucks. So you know, if it makes any noise, you <laughs> you're ahead of the curve there. Um, I would be partial to making a pedal that proudly says on the front PT2399 delay and everyone knows what they're dealing with and just design it well and it sounds great and very useful like the uh, Aeon pedals um, ambient delay I think they call it that's based on that same chip and it sounds great you know well designed circuit you can make you can make anything smell like roses <laughs> so we're gonna try this chip now I think uh, the jury's out a bit, like why would anyone do a scientific study on it, but the general consensus is these chips are degrading chemically from the inside out. Uh, they're starting to uh, like either corrode or, or some kind of interaction between the chemicals inside the, inside the chip, causing them to eventually fail. Now, I told this, this bloke, uh, I, can try, I can put the chip in, I can charge you for the labour, uh, there is absolutely no guarantee it will work. There's no guarantee this chip's not a dud. Um, it still costs what it costs. I stayed out of the transaction between the two people, the person selling the chip and the person buying the chip. I said, look, I'm just going to put the chip in, charge you regardless, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. If it works, happy days. Uh, and he was happy to take that risk because these things are worth a pretty penny. Um, I also made it very clear to him that there is also no guarantee how long that chip will last, even if it does work. It could fail next week. It could last another 10 years. We don't know. And I told him to factor in it not working more than a week. And if you're still willing to take that risk, then we can go ahead. So this vintage sort of... Uh, you, you've got a downward trajectory of these things um, they're starting to decay and when they've got proprietary parts trying to keep them running becomes more and more tenuous as time goes on basically you're trying to preserve a little period on that downward trajectory um, and you've really got no option to replace the critical part in this case that chip so results can be mixed and uh, basically if you're just doing it to flip the pedals the ethics of it are questionable because you're aware of the risk but if you make a quick little win you sell the thing for an exorbitant price uh, the next person buys it they kind of get screwed over um, if you don't disclose how tenuous this thing actually operating is so I don't know I sort of stay out of it but um, if someone asked me to do a job and I agree I do it and just make it very clear to them and leave the choice up to them and that's what this is all right so I've got to power it up it sort of sounds like it's working but um this clipping sort of happening there it's a bit it's a bit too subtle It is working, but it's uh, it should be a bit more washy than that. So, um, next up, we'll crack it open, and I'll just uh, demonstrate that there's no no output on the uh, the second pin. All right, so we've got the board removed, powered up. We've got a layer of Teflon behind it for, for insulation. Uh, so it is sort of, sort of, kind of working, but it sounds very thin, not very washy, and it sounds a little bit clipped. Uh, like there's extra harmonics there that aren't related to the fundamental. So we've got the trim pot here. 
we'll just monitor that's for the DC bias going into the thing 5.7 and it's very touchy it's like 5.8 all flanging's gone I'll move that barely touched it go the other way 5.6 it cuts off so there's a very very narrow very touchy uh, window of DC input bias to the uh, bucket brigade chip um, that it actually functions in and it shouldn't be that smaller range just looking at the scope at the output of the chip on one side one side of the trim pot on the other now that clipped waveform there that's as good as we could get it with the uh, um, calibrating of the, the DC bias um, so that's one side that's the other side that waveform should be cleaner and it should be present on both sides. So what you're actually seeing there is um, you're seeing the clock signal and the signal riding on top of it. And uh, it should be present on the top and bottom of that waveform. But it's only on the top, hence we have a pretty thin, shitty sounding flanger. So I'm gonna crack open the new one. <gasps> wow, Reticon. <laughs> These things used to be popular in uh, pinball machines. So there's a bit of a market for them as well, the restorers of pinball machines, which is why one of the reasons why they're so thin on the ground. Just carefully get in there and pry the old chip up and return it to the customer. And hopefully he doesn't try and sell it to someone. <laughs> Don't want to bend any leads there or have it come up on too steep an angle. Should have an IC extractor for this, that's the best tool for the job. So we'll pop that one in. It's got a, a uh, chip socket, which is good. That means we don't have to solder to the actual chip. I do have anti static mat here that the unit's sitting on and I'm touching. Um, we don't have to solder it to the chip, which eliminates the possibility of temperature related issues. Put the old chip back in. We'll fire that up. Just check the orientation. Yep, idiot check. Turn on the power supply. Now, initially, we probably won't get any flanging at all because we need to reset the bias because it was way off for that other chip, which was on the way out. So, yeah, we're getting no flanging there. So, let's just check what that pin one of that chip is we're sitting at 5.7 volts you can just do it audio wise I don't know how well you can hear it there but the flanging's back you can hear it cuts off on one side starts clipping on one side go the other way starts clipping on the other side so we'll set it somewhere in the middle pot's a little bit dirty We'll just check what that voltage is. <clears throat> About four volts. We'll just have a look at the waveform on either of those pins. Uh, the, either side of the trimmer pot. And now you can see the waveform is present on the top and bottom of that clock signal. As opposed to just the top. That's one leg of the trim pot, a balanced pot, which cancels out the clock signal. That's the other leg of it, the input. And then we've got it set to about the middle. And that's the output. So now there's only one waveform. Of course, it's jumping around a bit because we're, we're moving around in the time domain so the scope can't trigger. Uh, but that is showing that we're pretty well set in the middle of the range. We're cancelling out the clock signal and the waveform isn't clipped. It's nice and clean. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, a happy pedal now. So there's a look inside the thing. Uh, you can see I just bundled up the wires there for the transformer, but still left it in place. Uh, just check over and make sure nothing's um, nothing's uh, let go. No wires have let go. Um, that's the new wire I ran to feed the, the DC volt straight in. And uh, there's a new switch I installed over there. The old the old switch was buggered, and put some new nylock nuts on there. And uh, yeah, she's she's good to go. So we'll pop the cover back on, and we'll uh, we'll have a play through it and see what it sounds like. 
So that's more like it, isn't that? Got that real washy, awesome sound. Robot. Exterminate. It's slow, it's like you, it's very subtle like. You almost don't know it's there, but it just, it's not obvious, but it sounds just awesome. I do get why people like it. We got the filter matrix where it basically turns off the LFO. That changes the delay time. And rate does nothing. So it's like a very, very short delay. It's uh, about all that chip can manage in one chip. You pull it right back and it becomes a comb filter basically. Turn that on and the LFO comes back. Sounds awesome. Hope it keeps working. <laughs> well, thanks for watching Champignons, and uh, I'll see you with the next interesting little bit of kit. Like, subscribe, blah, blah. You know what to do, and you know where to find me. Take it easy.